Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. We are waving our banner from Kiambu region. This is the Great Debaters Contest and I am Austin Nyumbok. And I am Mariam Bishar. It's a battle of the fairer sex today. On stage, we have Kabare girls going versus Ngiriambu girls, and they're debating on whether people with HIV and AIDS should be profiled for ease of treatment. <laughs> Proposal number one, you have three minutes. I am here for the motion that states that people with HIV and AIDS should be profiled for ease of treatment. So basically, what is profiling? This is collecting of information on people with HIV and AIDS, where we get to know that they have AIDS, where we get to know the population that is in percentage maybe, or the ratio. So first and foremost, when you do your profiling, it helps the government to work on its manpower planning. Under manpower, I mean uh, we have teachers, we have doctors, we also have counselors. So in Kenya today, what ratio of doctor to patient do we need? What, patient, what ratio of social worker to patient do we need? What ratio of counselor to patient, both infected and affected, do we need to ease the treatment? I believe we all understand that treatment is not just by physical manner, probably by ARVs, the famous ARVs. It's also the psychological, they suffer psychological torture, probably because of stigmatization in society. Also, it may be spiritual, we need the pastors, priests, probably the, the sheikhs from the Muslim religion to help us ease the treatment spiritual-wise. Also, we find that um, ARVs are chemicals, we understand that. So, when you, as, uh, no, not you, someone suffering from HIV and AIDS seeks other medication, probably because of opportunistic diseases, states like pneumonia, malaria, state them, they may have a profound interaction that is the ARVs and the other pills, whereas because of the naive state of the person who does not have your profile, who does not understand that you as a person are suffering from HIV and AIDS. So um, under profiling, we have clinical profiling and we also have demographic. So under clinical profiling, this is whereby we collect information clinically. We are able to understand how is this HIV spreading? At what rate? What are the effects? The symptoms? After how long does it manifest? Is it a week? A month? A year? Maybe a decade? People do live wrong, right? So um, alongside cl clinical profiling, we also have epidemiology. This is a study of the causes, the effects, and symptoms of certain epidemics. We all understand that HIV is a great pandemic and epidemic. We need this profiling to ease the treatment. Thank you. First opposer, you have three minutes for your opening remarks. Opposing the motion is Nderito Christian Kabare Girls High School. On to my first point, when you profile people with HIV and AIDS, it means you have to get data from the persons individually. And for one, when you want to derive some data from, sub, from somebody, the person may not be willing. The person will be like, hmm, who do you want to know if I have the disease? Of who, how will it help you if, I, if you want to know I have the disease or not? You told us that when you're profiling, you have to know the cause of the disease, right? And when you, wa when you want to know the cause of the disease, disease, you have to ask the person, if at all you have the disease, how did you get the disease? It will be very hard for the person to say, I got the disease in one, two, or three ways. And this one, obviously, intrudes into one's privacy. Also, it leads to discrimination. When you want to profile some information, like in the U.S., a research done in the U.S., they profile according to the races, which we know it's illegal, but it's still happening. When we profile, I know, for example, a number of blacks have the disease, a number of whites have the disease. It leads to fear. These people fear because they don't know what the next step the government might take against them because, like, everybody knows, oh, we are the whites, we have the disease, or we are the blacks you have the disease. Also, when you start profiling, it's a long process. You have to collect data, not only from one country, not from one person, from very many people. This one, one, it leads to 
wastage of resources because one, you waste time, you waste labor, and you also waste money. In the process that, you'll have time to keep asking people, how did you get the disease? Which opportunistic disease do you have? And this time would have been used to do something else. For example, that time can be used that team can be used to do to improve something in the community. It can help us in community development. That money, that labor you have used, labor includes the doctors, the counselors. That labor, instead of having the doctors and the counselors who will not be given information by the people, why don't you check the Kazi Kwavizana? They do nice work instead of using all our time on profiling people who are not willing to give information. Thank you. We'll hear rebuttals now.
audience has posed questions to the debaters on stage, they will be responding. The proposers have been asked to explain more or expound more on clinical profiling, and the opposition have been challenged on what other ways we can use to ease treatment of HIV and AIDS. <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes. My name is Getare Lovi Mukami from Girambu Girls High School. Clinical profiling entails what is clinical profiling? That was your question. Clinical profiling, this is the study of the disease, the causes of the disease, the effects. How long is the disease taking to affect a person? That is clinical profiling. My first opposer said that community development should, will be developed if we profile people. But my question is this, what is the use of developing the community if the labor force is going to be, if the labor force is going to be destroyed on first and foremost? That is my first point. When we profile people, we are able to provide and also to promote the welfare of the employees who are suffering from HIV and AIDS disease. What is the work of an employer or what is the duty of an employer? The duty of an employer is to safeguard the rights of his or her employees. As an employer, if I have employees who have been profiled to be suffering from HIV and AIDS disease, I will know on how to cope with them. How is it? I will know the magnitude of the problem and may give them permission when they're seeking for treatment. Also, as an employer, I may, I may help and seek guidance in counseling from, for my employee who is sick. What leads to stigmatization? Stigmatization is as a result of ignorance. But when we teach people, both the infected and the affected, that HIV and AIDS disease is not, on, is not the only killer disease in the country, the affected and the infected will be able to know on how to cope with the disease. So let us profile people so that we may tell the people, so that we may build the self-esteem of one who is suffering from HIV and AIDS disease. Profiling people with HIV and AIDS disease helps or enables the nation to plan and also allocate budget and also assist in budgetary allocation. What is budgetary allocation? Budgetary allocation is when the ministries such as health, which is involved with people from HIV and AIDS disease, to be administered a substantial amount which is required. This money will be required in channeling of the drugs, purchasing of the drugs, and also helping and paying the medical staff. As I conclude, let us profile people so that we may be able to remove ignorance in our society. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. On stage is Fiona Kamau from Kabare Girls High School, strongly opposing the motion that people living with HIV and AIDS should be profiled for easier treatment. To answer our question, uh, we have alternative ways instead of profiling that can be used to, treat, to, for, to ease the treatment of the disease. For example, right now, yes, people have been sensitized, but yes, there's ignorance. So there's more sensitization, for example, through public rallies, we have seminars, and also through social and public media. For example, in Ghana, all over the country, there are posters that say, say no to sex, virgin power, virgin strength. So if all this is put together, instead of profiling me that I, you have my database, that I have all this, I have all this, sensitize people, make them know that you can go for treatment. Okay, you tell them that it's good that you come out, you can go for testing. If you're found positive, you go for treatment. I would also like to correct my second proposal on the issue that people collect correct data. The thing is, people are not coll collecting correct data in that, like for example, there is no, in Bangladesh, there is no routine diagnosis. For example, in one year, they will say that we are going to do this. In the next two years in all that is when they'll take the next count. Also, people do not want to divulge the information. If you go to a VCT center, that is voluntary counseling and testing centers, you will go, you ask, what is your name? You shall not give your name. You shall not give your real name. You will not give all your details. So if at all you are found positive and it's supposed to be profiled, what are you supposed to profile? Some false names, some false information, that does not, sorry, that does not help at all. Uh, also, the government does not have follow-up programs. I know that there's this number of people that have HIV, but what am I doing about it? I'm not doing it regularly. If at all you're doing anything about it, you're not doing it regularly. 
Also, HIV is not exactly a threat as such because if you look at it, insurance companies are also getting into insuring the people with HIV and AIDS, meaning that it's put, it's been, it's been curbed, it's been curbed such that it's no longer such a threat. So if we waste all our resources on profiling those with HIV and AIDS, what about killer threats like cancer? Currently, if someone is diagnosed with cancer, you have to go for chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and eventually, probably, you will die in a shorter span than HIV. Thank you. Closing submissions proposes you have one minute. As Sharon Githyomi from the Guillermo Girls High School. I want to say something. Uh, she said that um, when air visas issued, they will be used to make things like Chang'a, right? So basically, I stated before, it's not her reason only. Treatment is not only physical. I sensitized. I also mentioned it's also psychological, spiritual. Psychological, we need counselors. Through profiling, we'll know what ratio of counselors to patients we need. Also, she also stated that um, we, we don't need, we need more seminars. How will you know what places require the seminars? How will you know that those, those places have this number of victims through profiling? Profiling is not only from individual base, like my friend was trying to state it. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. And like say the CS of health does not know that a person from this certain place has HIV, does not know the name of this person. It's true data, like the percentage, and also the ratio probably even pie charts and diagrams and graphs. We also, as Kenya, need to be proactive, not reactive. This is true, pro this is true profiling. Thank you. Opposition, you also have a minute for your final submission. My name is Christine from Kabare Girls. Uh, you said that um, profiling is not only physical, it's also psychological. Instead of asking for somebody for some piece of information that they're not comfortable with, why don't you call for a general seminar for those with and those who do not have, so that those who do not have can encourage those who have, and they can preach the good the gospel, that when you go, get treated, it will help you more. Um, Personally, I, we oppose this motion because the more you profile people, the more you discriminate them. The more you profile people, the more you lower their self-esteem. And the more you profile people, the more inaccurate data you get. This is why we say that people should not be profiled. Instead, call for seminars. As my friend had said, continue creating awareness among these people. They will learn. They will preach the gospel. Asuntawagura. She, 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 she herself, she was out and she said, I have the virus, came up with an organization that today have helped millions of people. She didn't have to be profiled. So why don't we create awareness? Why don't we have seminars? And this will reduce profiling of people and still AIDS will no longer be a threat. Thank you. Kabare girls, I think there was excellent team playing uh, that was demonstrated, and that was lovely. Um, unlike Guillermo, because I think the Juliet did not cross-examine as expected. I think I'll address Sharon and Deritu at the same time. Both of you are lovely speakers. You know, you have your own unique style when you start off your teams, which is a very good characteristic for, for the first speaker. Good mastery of language as well and very confident. I think I also love Derito at the end when you come to really give your final submissions. I think yours was really outstanding by the, the engagement you brought forth. Clara, uh, good cross-examination for your team, at least you understood your role. Good submissions as well and very confident. Good speakers as well. Even Juliet, you're also a very good speaker. Just that remember that your role is to cross-examine, all right? Lori, good as well, you know, for Griambu and Fiona. I mean, I must say that I wrote excellent in terms of, you, you're seasoned, you understood your role very well, answered the questions, uh, uh, cross-examined, and also gave powerful submissions. I think that was, a, you're a very uh, good added uh, person for your team. Kabare, good attempt. Um, 
Christine comes on and you know talks about why we shouldn't do this, but I was hoping that you'd situate your debate in a context. You know, if there were certain things that your opponents didn't mention in their definition of terms, then you should have you know brought that out clearly. Clara, you understood your role as a cross examiner and you did that well. But I think for me, um, you know, the person that really stood out for me was Fiona. I like the fact that you mentioned the fact that there are more serious issues that we need to contend with as a country and not, uh, you know, not profiling. And, the, you know, there are people who suffer from um, more serious or more, um, you know, diseases such as cancer. And yet, you know, I, I think we need to pay attention to some of that as compared to spending resources on, um, you know, profiling. Good job and all the best to the two schools. Sharon for Ngiriambu and Christine for Kabare. I think I'll comfortably give it to Christine when it comes to role fulfillment as the first speaker. Nonetheless, Christine, you did not define your terms. And you see, Sharon defined her terms and she explained herself. And she talked about clinical and demogra uh, demographic profiling. Nonetheless, the aspect of clinical profiling, you know, it was not clear to the audience and also to the judges what exactly you meant by clinical profiling. Juliet and Clara, you did not raise the issue of cross-examination or you did not cross-examine. So you failed to fulfill your role. And by that, you lose a couple of marks. Clara, you raised the issue of stigmatization, which again, I credited you for stigmatization. But I love the cross-examination that Mukami brought in when she said that stigmatization can be addressed through other forums, for example, education, civic education, or sensitization of the people. Finally, Fiona, I think out of the six debaters on stage, I listened to you and I could follow through. I love the logic and I love your speaking style. And I just love the way you deliver your arguments. I think you're a good speaker, and, 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 you, and I, I could experience the motion actually through you. Ngiri Ambu girls, the judges awarded you with 67%. Audience, please give them a hand. <laughs> Very hard motion to defend. And Kabare girls, the judges awarded you with 72%, making you the winners of this debate. Congratulations to the two teams, and we'd like to send our gratitude to Safari Mpesa and KBC Channel One, and urge members of the audience and those back home to please follow us on Twitter at Great Debaters EA and all our social media platforms. I am Austin Nyambok. And I am Mariam Bishar. Keep watching the Great Debaters contest. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.